Good evening, y'all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I just want to start off with a question. Has there ever been a time in anyone's life where you have been out of money, been out of food in your fridge, and been out of gas in your car? <laughs> well, I was at that point yesterday. So. Oh. <laughs> no, but, well, now I'm going to tell a little story. When I first came to the Bible College last August, I had about five to ten dollars uh, left over birthday money and two weeks worth of food because my mother didn't want to see me starve. Um, but that was it. I was I'm terrible with my money, so I didn't have any. Um, so after two weeks, roughly, I'm looking at my bank account going, how am I going to buy groceries? How am I going to buy groceries? And I didn't have a job. Uh, I was putting applications in everywhere and nobody wanted to interview me. So I did the only thing I could think of doing and I prayed. I asked God to just give me what I needed. I just need food. She, even if you don't give me money, she needs a little bit of food. That's all right. And the very next day, I got a letter in my mailbox, and it was from my brother and my sister-in-law, and in it was a check for $100. Oh, all right. All right. All right. That was pretty incredible. I just took a moment and was like, you oh, know, God, that's pretty good. You <laughs> So that was, that was a pretty epic moment for me. I mean, it was the beginning of so many more times that God would provide for me. So many more times where I would get to see that in action. Alright, um, by now, I'm going to go to Matthew 6, and I'm going to start in verse 25. And I'm going to talk about how God provides. The Lord will provide. The Lord does provide. Alright, and we're going to see what Jesus has to say about that. Alright, is everybody there? Matthew... Matthew 6, 25. Matthew 6, 25. Yeah, and we're going to be reading all the way to verse 33. Okay. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like any of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will not he much more clothe you, mm. you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For is the, or it is the Gentiles who strive for these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm. and all these things will be given to you as well. I mean, that's pretty incredible right there. Amen. Jesus is telling you, you don't need to worry. God's got your back. God's got you covered. The Lord will provide. All you have to do is strive for his righteousness and his kingdom. And everything else is pretty much going to hand you. <laughs> so if we're just constantly striving to put God first in our lives and to actively seek his kingdom first, then we don't have to worry about our clothes. We don't have to worry about our food. We don't have to worry, modern terms, we don't have to worry about putting gas in our car mm. because that money's gonna be there when we need it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I had this much gas left in my tank and then I got a little bit of money and I was able to put some gas in my car and get my way to work yesterday morning. That was, yeah. God, God is there. The Lord will provide. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to look at some examples. Turn to Genesis 22. We're going to take a look at the story of Abraham and Isaac. All right, and just a backstory: 
Abraham had been, he'd been promised by God to have a son. And he was an old man, so that didn't really look possible. But it happened. He and his wife were super old. Amen. <laughs> I mean, at that age, you don't even really want a kid, because then you have to chase him around. <laughs> but they got that child, and they were so blessed by it. Amen. But then God asked Abraham to do something that was pretty crazy. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said to him, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, mm -hmm. and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early, took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out, and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. I mean, first of all, if I were Abraham, I'd start asking questions. Like, um, <laughs> God, are you, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, this is my son. Yeah, I mean, you promised that, like, nations were going to come from him and stuff. So, I mean, but he didn't do that. He just got up and did what God asked him to do. Mm. I mean, I don't think most of us can say we have great faith like that. Mm. All right, continue on in verse 7. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Uh, Dad? You know, you've got everything else, but what are we going to burn? <coughs> Abraham said to him, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. So if I were Isaac and him, all right, all right God, God's going to provide. I mean, I wouldn't have been thinking, that's not going to sacrifice me. <laughs> In verse 9, when they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He found his son Isaac and mm. laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Now is the point where I'd be freaking out. <laughs> Dad, why are you holding that knife over me? <laughs> verse 10, then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Mm. As it is said on this day, on the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. So God provided for Abraham because Abraham was faithful. He was willing to sacrifice his son. The son that he had put so much hope in, the son that, for the most part, he didn't even think was going to be there ever. But he was so close to doing it just because God told him to. But he didn't have to because the Lord provided. Mm. The Lord will always provide. Amen. All right, we're going to turn to 1 Samuel 1 now to see another story of whenever God provided for someone. We're going to take a look at a woman named Hannah. Hannah was a woman of God. Hannah prayed all the time, constantly for a son, kind of like Abraham and Sarah. It was her heart's desire to have a child, one that she could love and care for. And she could have been praying that for years, and it didn't happen. But on this one time, she was just, she was giving herself up and going, God, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I just need you and I need to talk to you right now. And so she prayed. She said, O oh Lord of hosts, if only you will look at the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall not drink either wine nor intoxicants and do not touch a razor to his head. So she was like, God, you know, if you're going to give me a son, I'm going to give him to you. And I, I, that's how much I want it. So, in verse 20, in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. 
So what did God do? He provided. He provided a son. And this son grew up to be such a great prophet. And Hannah didn't go back on her word. He became a Nazarite. He lived at the temple. Mm, amen. It's incredible. The Lord will provide. All right, and we're going to turn to 1 Kings 17. Here is another story of how God provides for those who are faithful. All right, verses 8 through 16. All right, and uh, this is about Elijah. And Elijah is kind of going through a thing right now when he's running away from Ahab, the evil king. And the land was in a drought. There was no rain. And so there was no food. So everybody was hungry, including Elijah. But God told him, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. Then he came to the gate of the town. A woman was there gathering sticks. He called her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, mm. only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks, so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, so that I may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. So what he's telling her is, don't make it for yourself. You're not going to eat it. Your son's not going to eat it. You're going to give it to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I would be a little bit like, ah, I kind of wanted that. I was looking forward to that. Like, I would working all morning towards that. But what he says next, I mean, that's what makes it worth it. He says in verse 14, For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, mm. and the jug of oil will not fail mm. until the day that the Lord sends the rain to the earth. Amen. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. So, who provided? Lord. The Lord. The Amen. Lord will provide. The Lord provided for Elijah, mm. and the Lord provided for the widow and her household. He gave them enough food to be able to last as long as this drought was going on. Mm. That's incredible. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I can't exactly make a jar of oil last forever or a grain of mm. a thing of meal. I'm like, um, I'm going to make all of that and eat it in one day. <laughs> I'm hungry sometimes. But I think it's just incredible to see all these times that we look at for Hannah, for Abraham and Isaac, for Elijah and the widow, like God never failed them. But there's a common factor amongst them all. They weren't just regular people who just, you know, like went out and got drunk every night and had fun and party. They were people that were faithful to God, people that abided by his law. That's it. And because of that, God provided for them. Mm, amen. God made sure that they had what they needed to survive. Again, in Matthew 6, verse 33, it says, But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus tells you here that if you put God first, and you put his kingdom first, Everything that you need will be given to you, and more. Everything you can possibly think of. If you want a child, if you love God first, and you put God first, God will give you that child. And, and then in verse 25 of chapter 6 to 12, verse 25 and 26, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, Verse 26, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Mm, amen. He says it right there. You are way more valuable than any flower or any bird. So God's going to provide for you. And you don't need to worry. 
Worry only gets in the way of all the amazing things that you could be doing. You could be going out, knocking door to door, and telling people about the kingdom. <laughs> there you go. Amen. <laughs> and because of that, God will provide for you. Mm. The Lord will provide if you seek Him first. And you needn't worry because He will always, always provide for you. Thank you. Hallelujah.